Last but not least, I'm going to introduce what we think might be the most significant feature of BI 10.2, dynamic cubes. So just what are dynamic cubes? This is a new in-memory OLAP solution designed to analyze data directly from relational data marts or data warehouses. This is a new layer within the Cognos BI query engine to allow high-performance OLAP-style analytics against very large relational data stores. It is built into the existing 64-bit dynamic query mode service, so there's no separate installation, and it is included as part of the standard Cognos BI server license. So there's no additional software cost to utilize dynamic cubes. Each cube is a published as a dimensional view of a relational star or snowflake schema based on a single fact table. The dynamic cube engine is fully aggregate aware and can leverage any existing aggregate reporting tables that may exist within the database schema. Once a cube is published, it behaves just like any other OLAP application data source within the Cognos BI studios. Dynamic cubes are leveraging the extensive caching capabilities within the dynamic query mode engine to efficiently store different data types and types of results within memory. Separate, separate caches for dimensions and numbers as well as queries, expressions, and results, combined with configurable in-memory aggregate caching provides a powerful analytic platform. The data is shared by all users. Security rules defined within the cube are also applied to the cache just like any other data source. In addition to utilizing in-memory caching, the dynamic query engine complements the caching with full database aggregate support. Expanded capabilities of the dynamic query analyzer tool, which was originally introduced in Cognos 10 to support EQM, provide detailed analysis and recommendations for both in-memory and database aggregates. The in-memory aggregate recommendations can be implemented on the fly directly from dynamic query analyzer. Dynamic cubes are not intended to replace any existing technology, so those folks are completely satisfied with PowerPlay Transformer. You don't have to worry. IBM's not replacing this technology anytime soon. Dynamic cubes are designed to complement the existing BIOF capabilities for power, as PowerPlay and DMR or dimensionally modeled relational packages. Dynamic cubes are designed and published with a new client-based tool, the IBM Cognos Cube Designer. This is a separate modeling environment, not integrated or part of the existing framework manager tool. The Cube Designer is currently intended to work only with star or snowflake schemas, and a single base cube is comprised of one fact table in many dimensions. A single cube model can be used to develop multiple cubes, Dimensions can be shared, and two base cubes can be merged into a single virtual cube where data from multiple fact sources is needed. Virtual cubes can be built using base cubes or other virtual cubes to extend the OLAP solution as required. This is a basic screenshot of the Cognos Cube Designer tool. Notice that the panel to the far left contains a data source database schema, which is imported in similar fashion to using the Framework Manager Metadata Wizard. The center pane contains the developed cube objects, such as dimensions, hierarchies, levels, as well as the measures and cubes. The far right pane is where dimensional relationships are defined, as well as custom measure definition, aggregates, and security. For those that are familiar with applying security in the PowerPlay Transformer environment, a similar method is used in Cube Designer by defining dimensional views and then assigning them to establish security groups or roles. Building a dynamic cube 
starts with importing the source database schema, followed by creating dimensions and measures, and then adding these elements to a cube. When a cube is published, three processes are initiated. A data source connection for the cube will be established, a reporting package will be created, and the cube definition will be created and saved within the content store. When a dynamic cube is started, all of the dimensions and corresponding members are immediately loaded into memory. As measures are consumed by end users, those query results are also cached and will be available for all users. In addition to loading dimensions, any in-memory aggregate definitions are also executed and loaded into memory upon cube startup. So the more a cube is used, more result aggregates will be stored, which will help improve performance for future users. Once dynamic cubes have been published, they're administered via Cognos Connection under Cognos Administration. Under the Status tab in the System section, each cube will be visible under the query service for that dispatcher. From here, you can start and stop the cube, along with various other administrative functions. When a cube is started, usage statistics will also start to accumulate, including various stats on data cache hit rates, aggregate usage, etc. The statistics are, are visible when the cube is selected in the upper right pane. In the data source connection area under the configuration tab, dynamic cubes are identified with a small tricolor cube within the normal data source icon. To manage settings around tuning and performance, each published dynamic cube will be listed in the dispatches and services section under the configuration tab. These settings are located under the properties of the dispatcher query service and it is here where you adjust properties such as data cache sizes and related memory allocations for each dynamic cube. So you can also specify a trigger name to restart the cube at the completion of an ETL process or other event. As I mentioned earlier in the presentation, the Dynamic Query Analyzer, which was introduced with Cognos 10 Dynamic Query Mode, or DQM, it now also contains monitors and tools designed specifically for dynamic cubes. A cube may be analyzed by examining existing workload logs and also by running an automated process to simulate end users querying the cube for a specified period of time. Both sets of results can then be used to generate recommendations for in-memory and database aggregates to help boost performance. Within the Query Analyzer, recommendations are created as separate tabs at the bottom of the center window. Recommendations for in-memory aggregates can be implemented directly from the Dynamic Query Analyzer and immediately published to the content store. When the cube is restarted, it will include these new in-memory aggregate definitions to build the corresponding aggregate cache. The in-database aggregate recommendations will actually, will actually produce a SQL script that can be run by DBA to generate the recommended aggregate tables within the source database. Once new aggregate tables have been implemented, they can be imported and added to the cube model within the Cognos Cube Designer. So just to summarize where dynamic cubes fit into the IBM OLAP, IBM Cognos BI OLAP offerings, they're designed to provide high-performing, aggregate-aware relational OLAP solutions on top of very large databases. The initial release does require the source database be modeled as a star or snowflake schema. Power cubes are still a very viable part of the Cognos BI platform for those customers with low to medium data volumes and are satisfied with the data latency process and other limitations such as cube size and dimension lim member limits. DMR, or Dimensionally Modeled Relational, 
via the dynamic query mode is still appropriate for low to medium data volumes where direct access to the most current data is required or the data source is transactional in nature and not designed as a star or snowflake schema. I know we've covered quite a bit in the presentation and I imagine there's some of you that would like a lot more in-depth information. So at this point, I'm going to turn it back over to Jesse McNulty to help explain how LPA systems can help you with your conversion or implementation of Cognos BI 10.2. Jesse? Thanks, Eric. There's a lot of information. Uh, there's a lot of new capabilities in the platform, and, and we'll have some additional webinars in the future where we might deep dive into some of these subjects a little bit more. So, Eric, do I have one more slide? Now, if anyone has any specific questions, please use the chat window on WebEx to, to post the question uh, to myself or shoot me an email. I've kind of pulled together several of the questions. But before I get to those, I just want to reiterate, uh, you know, our two specific offerings. So our first one is upgrade services. So again, we're going to, we'll, we'll come in, educate your team, including training on the new two components and some of configure an environment. Validate your key components, prototype some of the new Tensu capabilities such as dynamic cubes, uh, and, we'll leave, and you'll leave with a plan in place to actually go complete the rest of your environments. We've got a two-day Cognos Tensu training offering, so if you just want the knowledge transfer and training, and the rest of our training packages have been up, updated for Tensu. We've got an advisory service around OLAP strategies to help choose now that we have additional options on OLAP, we throw TM1 in there, there's a whole other option to help you choose the right uh, direction, build a plan to implement, and train your team, and likewise for Cognos Workspace. So now that we've got uh, a dashboarding tool that we think will be adopted at a much higher rate than, than what Business Insight was, then we can help you define, define that workspace strategy, implementation plan, training, uh, and build some prototypes. So, the first question I have, Eric, is on um, license changes. So, are there any license changes? And, and I'll take that one. Um, there's no new roles added or anything along those lines. So, all the capabilities that we're seeing here are provided at the different license levels. So, for example, uh, for Cognos Insight and the new tree map capability, if you already licensed to use Cognos Insight, you, you've got the new tree map capability. So there is not, there's, there's nothing in the way of a new role or anything like that uh, involved for licensing. In dynamic cubes, there's no additional server license or anything like that that's included with your, with your Cognos licensing. Uh, and the next question is, is 10-2 upgrade approach and complexities of upgrade? Can you provide some background on upgrades? 10-2. Well, if implementing an upgrade to 10.2 would be very similar to installing, if you were already on 10 or 10.1, upgrading to 10.11. It's a complete new install. Um, so any, any customers familiar with the upgrade process and moving the content store to 10.2, uh, again, very straightforward process. 